Good day everyone. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Mont Hibernator Bivy. Hopefully you can see that and hopefully it's not flipped around because I'm using the selfie camera on my phone. Before I start, I'd just like to say I'm not affiliated with Mont in any way. I purchased this myself. They haven't sent me any free gear or anything. So to start off uh, with Bivy bags, basically they're just a single wall tent. You can get several varieties um, ranging from ones that are simply uh, waterproof sacks that go around you and might have a drawstring. Um, to ones with a, a zip and a, a bug net, uh, to ones that have one hoop or even two hoops uh, to keep the bivy bag off you, but generally only have uh, a single wall and they're normally quite small. The reason bivy bags were made is, um, well, there's a few reasons that people use bivy bags. One, they're really good if you're climbing mountains and you need a bit of an emergency shelter, because they're pretty compact um, to have in your bag, and also they are uh, very durable when it comes to resisting high winds uh, there's just no way they can get um, get blown off and uh, they also have a very small footprint so you can fit them in a really tiny space. Another good reason people use bivy bags is uh, just simplicity. Uh, so this particular Mont bivy bag is used by the Australian Defence Force. Just for them it's a very easy uh, option to get out, fit everyone in I assume. I'm not associated with the military. Uh, and maybe even a stealthy option and that's personally what I like about bivy bag. They're quite a stealthy option. Let's talk about this bivy bag in particular. Um, so, as you can see, it's a reasonably bulky option. The current model is about $500 and weighs about at 700 to 800 grams on the site. This one I've weighed myself is a little bit heavier, it weighs about one kilogram, which is kind of ridiculous when you think about uh, some of the lightweight shelters you can get these days, such as Tarp Tent or Z Packs or Big Agnes. Um, they can do some really lightweight shelters. They give you a full tent that can weigh perhaps 500 grams even. Um, so, sort of getting less for more weight when you come to something like this. However, there are other bivy options. Uh, I know a cheap one, perhaps Kathmandu. Uh, they do a very uh, thin bivy that um, packs down to about the small I've seen it myself. Uh, and that bivy is um, de definitely a good option if you're bike camping and you've already got a shelter. However, um, it's not as waterproof or not as durable as something like this. So let's go into the details a little bit further. I'll just talk about it and then uh, we'll, we'll see what we can see. Let's set it up. This whole piece of equipment just takes no time to set up. I can roll it out and uh, we've got it there. So I'll just go through a few of the details. We've got a couple of toggle points here which you can use to tie the, uh, the um, material off your face. The front fully unzips and you can see we've got a bug mesh underneath the Mont logo and some more tags so that you can keep the bug mesh off your face. You've then got a zip here and another zip for the outer waterproof fabric. We've got four peg down points if you like. One, two and three, four at the base. There's not really much else to see. Basically the whole thing is completely sealed, 100% watertight all the way around and it's made of a reasonably thick material. This one is in fact Gore-Tex. The newer models are Hydronaut, which is slightly lighter, but has a very similar waterproof rating. Before simplicity, this is pretty good. However, there are several flaws that I have identified. If you can imagine, you set up for the night and you tie your strings up here, up to a tree or something, which you don't always have. That's probably flaw number one. Uh, then, you know, you do have the bug net off your face. However, I've found that it doesn't quite get perfectly off your face, um, which is a little bit of an issue, but not the end of the world. And then during the night, it starts raining, you think, okay, what do I want? I want my waterproof cover on. Now, sleeping in a bivy in the rain is not a comfortable experience, but you're still gonna wanna have the cover on to keep you a little bit more dry. First issue is if you've got this bug net zipped up, you have to unzip it to reach around to get the zips here so that you can come back and get this full thing over your head. The next issue is you've already got this tied up here. So you have to untie that and then tie it to this end point if you want this tied up above your head. That's the experience I've had so far. And I don't think it is very good at all, especially when it starts raining and you wake up during the night. If someone else has a different solution of how to fix that, please let me know. The ideal solution of what I would like is to actually turn this into a bivy with a hoop. Putting a small pole from here, holding this up and going over there. 
Then during the night, at least you can just flip this over and it will still have the pole underneath holding it up, giving yourself a good waterproof shelter. However, this doesn't come with this particular bivy, so we don't have it as an option. So the solution I've come up with, just to make this whole thing a little bit simpler, is to keep my bag in the head of the bivy. Now, I don't know if this is the best solution, but it's certainly one I find works for me. The bivy bag is really quite long. I, myself, am about 183 centimeters or six foot. And I fit in without much issue. So my feet all the way at the bottom with a little bit of kicking space. And uh, over here, I might put, just for example, this bag. It's a bit hard to do this one-handed, but you can see zipping that up, the bag acts as a, as a device to hold the um, both the bug net and the fly of the bivy off my face. Allowing me to have room on the inside. It doesn't look like the most comfortable experience and you're certainly right, it is quite uh, snug. Camping in a bivy in the rain is certainly going to be a miserable experience. I've devised a little experiment just to see how well this bivy performs in the rain because being Gore-Tex or Hydronaut, which is the newer version, should be very, very water resistant. I put Tyvek down and rid up a little wall, so hopefully the water pools around me and we can really see how well this bivy performs. If you really wanted to be a bit more comfortable, you could have a tarp that you attach to trees over the top. You can get quite lightweight tarps for under 500 grams. Solid rain that you might get. You can only see that water beading really nicely off, showing how high quality this is. I've set the time for 13 minutes. Let's see how well I last under this. Already it's gonna be quite difficult to get in without getting wet. So I speed to sort of my friend here. Now you can imagine, in a scenario like this, where is your gear going to go? Well, hopefully you have a waterproof pack cover, otherwise your gear is just going to get wet. You really can't zip a bivy like this up completely, otherwise you just won't be able to breathe inside it, and you'll actually condensate all your breath and get wet from the inside out. I'm certainly not wet on the inside yet, However, I did get a bit wet getting inside the bivy. One thing that's really important to note is the rain is actually almost contacting you. Although the material is waterproof, the, uh, the rain will hit the material and you feel the cold of the rain coming through. So already, even though it's quite a hot day, I can feel myself cooling down quite quickly. The weight of the water would also compress your sleeping bag. So you might find yourself getting a little bit colder in this scenario than you'd expect to. You'd have to regularly push your hands up to flick all the water off that's building up. All right, let's have a look at the damage. So even though we were beating quite nicely earlier, it's definitely not doing that anymore. You can see it's sort of got this other appearance where it's soaked in a little bit. You can see just how much water I was sitting in right now. That's a proper puddle that I was rolling about in. And not a single bit of me got wet during that whole time. Now, one flaw with my experiment is I've just been having the water come over that way. You can imagine if it's raining, it's gonna be directly down, which will make it a little bit harder to have a little bit of a pocket here to breathe out of. So if we take a peek inside, you can see we've still got all the water here. So I promise I'm not cheating you. Completely dry in there. Let's have a look a little bit further in. So that's that material there that's just drenched with it. And you can see there's nothing there. And this is not a brand new bivy. And it is completely dry. This is where a bivy would outperform one of your ultralight tents. Only in this scenario. However, I would probably be more comfortable in an ultralight tent 
that has a 1,200 millimeter hydrostatic head floor. Even though I get wet on the floor, unlike this, but just because I don't have room to sit up in. Let's get my final conclusions on this. So overall, the Mont Hibernator Bivy is a really high quality piece of equipment. It is made astoundingly strong, really well built, and as you saw, completely waterproof. It's a really nice color for stealthy camping, and you've got the bug net. It's a really easy option to use if you don't want to have the complexity of setting up a tent, or also you've just got a really small spot that you want to squeeze into. It's also good because it rolls down pretty small. However, it is a bit heavier than uh, some of the lightweight tents on the market, given this is the one kilogram one, the newer one being about 700 grams now. My issues with this are not so much issues with the Mont Bivy itself, but really with Bivy's um, altogether. They uh, don't allow you to have a comfortable living space uh, in inclement weather. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you around in another review soon.